Namaste, I am Anita Goa. If you're new to me in my channel, welcome. Here is a post-workout yoga stretching routine for the lower body. It's been a while since I've offered just a pure stretch. I hope that you enjoy this one. I particularly did have Anna Titanen in mind. She's been leaving comments and doing a lot of my old post-workout yoga stretching routines for a long time and I figured it was due to make another one. This one is really great to um, incorporate after a high intensity interval training workout, a run particularly, and uh, maybe some work that you've done in the gym. It involves some twisting and side bending, which I feel helps to uh, release the hips a lot and get a little bit deeper into the hip stretches. Let me know how this one feels, how you end up using it. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I will see you on the mat. We're going to begin on our abdomen and come into a sphinx pose. So your forearms are going to be on the floor, elbows are going to be shoulder distance apart. And as you root down into the forearms, lift through the breastbone and roll your shoulders back and try to wrap your shoulder blades into the armpits as much, much as you can. And as you stay as lifted as possible in your upper body, feel your pubic bone into the floor and lift your navel up towards your spine. So it's important that you find a stability here in your pelvis. Make sure that you can breathe, inhale and exhale through your nose, and that you can move your head a little bit side to side. So this is very good for posture. So although we're focusing on our lower body, in this video, we also have to make sure that we pay attention to the rest of the body, right? So next, we're moving into um, what's called a half frog pose. You can work the right hand in a little bit on a diagonal. And then we're going to transfer the left hand behind and bend the left leg and take a hold of the left foot. So take a hold of the foot and then draw the heel and the foot as close in towards your buttocks as you can. Now see if you can shift your hand to the top of the foot and then make sure that you're not sinking into your shoulders but try to stay lifted. And if it's too much you can always lower a little bit further down, either rest your forehead on your hand or take a block and rest your forehead in that way. Right? But this way you'll feel either way a deep stretch into the quadricep, the muscle in the front of your thigh. You might even feel it also in the front of your shoulder and the top of your foot and your toes. So that's the wonderful thing about the yoga poses is that it targets one area but so many areas around it as well. Three for one, four for one, <laughs> maybe two for one. <laughs> you do the counting. <laughs> And slowly release. You get a lot of bang for your buck, that's for sure, practicing yoga poses. So lift your chest again, roll the shoulders back, just find that sphinx pose. And we'll repeat this on the other side. So work your left hand in on a diagonal, work the right arm behind you, take a hold of the foot and draw the foot and the heel as close towards the buttocks as you can, trying to maintain the posture. Just notice how it feels on this side might feel different and adjust yourself accordingly. Breathe in and breathe out. And I encourage you to do this, you know, for a period of time. And for each time you do it, you might start to notice changes. So don't give up even if it feels a bit challenging. Just keep at it, practice, practice. And then slowly release. Lower it down and back into Sphinx Pose. Good, then lower your chest down. Move your hands right next to your ribs, elbows on top of your wrists. You can either inhale to a baby cobra, lifting the chest, or go towards an upward facing dog. And in upward facing dog, the knees can be on the ground. Lift your chest, roll the shoulders open, or you can lift your knees off 
the ground and then press with the tops of your feet and this way you continue the stretch at the tops of the feet and also into your shins. Good, then exhale, round it into a cat stretch. And you can adjust yourself a little bit here so your shoulders are on top of your wrists and your hips are on top of your knees. Inhale, arch it into a cow. Curl the toes under. And then exhale, draw your hips back towards your heels with the toes curled under. And then you're going to press your hands away from you and send your shoulders up into their sockets so that you find lots of space between your ears and your shoulders. And then just apply as much weight into the feet as you can. Breathe in and breathe out. This is good if you do a lot of running, even if you do a lot of standing. Just take care of your feet and stretch the soles of your feet or the fascia of your feet. Breathe in and breathe out. It might feel a bit uncomfortable, but see if you can breathe through it. Don't push too hard. Of course, never. Just move a little bit into that comfortably uncomfortable space. Good, and shift your hips forward and exhale it into downward facing dog. So send your sitting bones to the ceiling. Now your heels can be off the ground, knees can be bent. And then you can either press one heel into the floor at a time, like you're pedaling through your feet. So you're getting into your calf. And try to lift your toes up off the floor as you press the heels into the floor. So that way you're strengthening your shins. So if you do a lot of running, this will help to prevent getting shin splints. Or you can try to press both of your heels into the floor as you lift your toes up off the floor. Draw the energy up through the front of your thighs and shins, and then draw the energy down through the backs of your thighs. So stretching the calves and the hamstrings. Good. Now we're going to slide the right leg into a pigeon position. So drawing the right knee towards your right thumb. You're going to open up the angle to maybe like a 30 degree angle. Come on to your fingertips and then point the back toes and rest to the center of the quad, the shin and the top of the foot. And then inhale, lift up and open and then we'll continue that stretch into the quadricep and the hip flexor and then exhale, descend it forward. Now you can rest your forehead onto your hands. You can also rest your forehead onto a block and open the arms into cactus arms. Make sure that you find a position where your upper body feels relaxed, where your head gets a bit heavy, where you can stay fully connected to your breathing and exhale as fully as you can. And just try to let your upper body get heavy so that it can soften and release and relax into your right hip. And you can stay here or you can also thread the needle, which means you can slide the left arm to the right and rest your left ear onto the block. And then reach the right arm up and work the right arm behind you and see if you can take a hold of the right big toe or you can bend your left leg and take a hold of the left foot and continue the stretch of the front of your thigh there. Okay, so you have different options but now what you're doing is adding on a rotation of your spine and you're getting a bit deeper into the right hip. Inhale and exhale. Good. And slowly we're going to come out of it, reaching the right arm up, grounding the right palm to the floor, and then push away and come back up to the center. Good. Now sit down onto the right sitting bone, and you're going to swing your left leg to the front. Level off your hips and keep the right sole of your foot to the right inner thigh. Sitting up tall, we call this head to knee pose or Janu Sushrasana. And then we're going to twist it to the right, left hand to the outside of the right thigh. Reach the right arm up, you can bend the elbow and support your head and then bend it over 
to your left. All right, so here you're getting that stretch into the left hamstring, the back of your left thigh, but you're also moving into the right side waist and deep into the right hip. All right, so it might seem a little strange that I'm adding on all of these side bends and rotations, but they're all connected into our hips, and it will help you to create a little bit more mobility. And then lift it up, inhale. We're going to ground the right palm behind us and then point the left foot, press into the right shin and then lift up and open. So you're getting that whole deep stretch into the left hip there. Hip flexor. And release and lower down. And now rotate to the left so the right hand goes to the outside of the left thigh, left arm behind. And then from there, bend over the left leg. Right hand can take the outside of the foot, left hand the inside, left wrist on top, or you can use a strap and then fold over your left thigh. You can even support your wrists or your hands on each side of your leg. We just wanted to make sure that we rotated to the left to make you leveled over the leg because it's, because it's an asymmetrical po position. Good. The more you flex the foot, you'll feel this in your calf. Good. And slowly lift it up. Now we're going to ground the right foot to the outside of the left thigh. Your left leg can either stay extended or you can bend the left leg in. And then draw the right leg as close to your chest as you can. Wrap the left arm around your thigh and then twist it open to the right. So here we continue the stretch into the right hip. So continuing the work from the pigeon position. So you can find a gaze behind you. You don't have to look all the way behind if that feels uncomfortable for your neck. You can also look to the side or you can look to the front. You'll still get the rotation there of your spine. and release. Now we're going to lean over to the left hip and swing the right leg to the back and find our pigeon position again. So just adjust yourself, draw that left knee to the left thumb, open up the leg to the angle that feels fine for your hips, face back and rest in the center of the quad, the shin and the top of the foot. Inhale, lift your chest and exhale, descend it forward. So your choice, how you want to release and support. Forehead can go onto the block or onto the floor or onto your hands. Just make sure that the upper body feels relaxed. Breathe in. Breathe out. Or if you want to go into the threading the needle, slide the right arm to the left, let your right ear rest onto the block. You can reach the left arm up, work the arm behind you and bind either with the big toe or bend the right leg, draw that right heel in. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Be wherever you feel the depth of the stretch, the depth of your breath, and you over time feel that release happening. Good, and rewind yourself out of it. Come back up, and then sit down onto the left sitting bone, swing the right leg to the front, Sit up tall, left sole of your foot to the right inner thigh, inhale, exhale it to the left, right hand to the knee, left arm behind you, inhale the left arm up and then bend the elbow, and then exhale from that rotation, bend over your right leg. So you try to peek from underneath the bicep here, so you'll feel it into the right hamstring, and also the left side waist all the way in to the hip there, upper hip.
Good. And lift up, inhale, and ground that palm to the floor. Press into the left shin, lift the pelvis, and then open it up. And release and lower it down. So good. Cross the left foot to the outside of the thigh. Level off your seat. Right leg can either be extended or you can bend it. And then wrap the right arm around your thigh. Twist it open to the left. And again, let your shoulders drop. Just adjust where your head can be. It can be to the side or to the front. Inhale fully. Exhale completely. Good, and release and do an open twist. So good, face forward. Now you're going to lean back and extend the legs out. Just give your legs a little bit of a massage. And you can either lean up against the wall or a sofa, anything that you have. And Find that extension into your spine and then work the soles of your feet together and allow the knees to drop down towards the floor. So if you find that it's too intense into the knees and you want to place uh, two blocks behind your knees, you can also do that. But I just want you to come into a position where you feel the stretch into your groin. You can take the heels of your hands right onto your thighs and then gently feel like you're pushing away, allowing the knees to go a little bit further towards the floor. It might be a little bit too much, but just test it out and see where you're at. And especially if you feel that you're very tight in this area, it can be good to feel the support of the wall behind you. Now if you have a little bit more flexibility and you can take it further, you can transfer your hands to the feet. Inhale, length. And then exhale, hinge your way forward. Okay, maintain that openness. So everything that we worked so far, if it feels very tight, feel free to just wiggle it side to side a little bit. Sometimes that can feel good and that can feel releasing. Or sometimes just holding it still is the best thing to do. So notice what it is that you feel is right for you today. Breathe in and breathe out. Good, and gradually come up if you bend forward. If you're sitting against the wall, then slide your legs a little bit forward, one at a time. And you're going to come into the diamond shape position. So inhale, lift, and then we're going to exhale, descend forward. So because we changed the leg position, now you might feel this stretching a little bit more through the outer seam of your legs into the IT band, and also into the outer upper hips, plus the lower back. See, there's a little bit of a roundedness of the spine, but I'm not hunching. I'm extending as I'm bending forward. Good, and gradually come up and then slide your legs all the way to the front and just give it a little bit of a massage. Good, I'm just going to turn myself back to the center. So now we're going to do a forward fold. So sit up tall, you can keep the knees bent. Start off with your toes pointing up and then bend your way forward. So use a strap here if you need one. You can hold to the outsides of your feet, but you can also rest the arms at the side of your body. 
and fold. And also one thing that I've enjoyed doing recently is just allowing my feet to turn out also a little bit more of an external rotation and then you'll feel the stretch a bit more towards the outer seams towards the uh, IT band and then I also like to turn my toes in a little bit and that also gives a different stretch so I like to change it up a bit so that way we don't get stuck and stale not always doing the same thing even though doing the same thing over a period of time is how we improve and how we notice the changes but it's good to change it up <laughs> mix and match good and gradually lift Ah, oh, cross your legs. Yay, and that was it. I hope that that felt like a good stretch for your lower body after your workout. You can try to memorize it or maybe write it down. If you want to hang out a little bit longer in each of the positions, feel free to do that. But this is just a nice little uh, guideline, I think, to take you into different positions to release tension and tightness from the lower part of yourself. Let me know in the comments how this felt. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. Bye!